Jeanette Wilson. I'm a United States citizen, a North Carolinian, a Charlottean, and a wife and a mother. Abortion is a national issue. It is a state issue, it is a local issue, and it is a personal issue. What we've seen in the last few weeks on the videos exposing Planned Parenthood's horrific and illegal policies has angered us, sickened us, but I hope it has awakened us. We are living in a time in our country when future generations will look back on this in shame. My cry this morning is when? When do we stand up as a society and say enough is enough? Most of us have probably seen those seven videos. Did you know that 40% of Americans have not? As a mother who has personally marveled at the miraculous gift of life, it has brought me to tears to see how callously those precious little ones were treated as merchandise and then disposed of like trash. These videos have brought some serious problems to the forefront, but let's take a step back. Selling little babies body parts for money is repulsive, but it was repulsive before that. Sorting through a bloody pie pan to get to those organs is disgusting but it was disgusting before that. Harvesting those little baby body parts with less crunchy techniques is nauseating. Yes, but yes. let's be honest, every abortion should be nauseating. Yes. If we are honest, and we really take the time to stop and think about what's done behind the closed doors of Planned Parenthood or any other abortion facility, it's all repulsive. Every step of the way, it's repulsive. What should really turn our stomachs is what's at the center of all this Planned Parenthood video controversy. Abortion itself, child sacrifice, and the ultimate destruction of the little baby boys and the little baby girls of your city. It is the ultimate form of child abuse. Yes. Yes. It is horrendous, revolting, heart-wrenching, abhorrent, repugnant, vile, yes. barbaric, and every other synonym I looked up when I was writing this speech. Yes. Murder, my friends, is what can no longer be tolerated by our civilized society. Amen. And murder is what's represented by that building, right. this business, this giant that is the abortion industry in our country. When will we say enough is enough? Let's face it, abortion has become accepted by almost everybody. The church was asleep and it happened on our watch. How many people are now comfortable with exceptions or the tide has turned and we just have to make it safe and rare? You being here today says that status quo is not acceptable anymore. There is blood in the streets of Charlotte, North Carolina. It starts at CMC in Presby downtown. Yes. There's blood on Albemarle Road right here in front of this Planned Parenthood. There's blood on Hebron in front of a family reproductive health center. There's blood on Wendover Road outside Carolina Center for Women. And there's blood on Latrobe Drive outside a preferred women's health center. And the Bible says it's the kind of blood that cries out to God yeah, from the yeah. ground. Yeah. Planned Parenthood is just the umbrella over all the slaughter centers around this country. Do you know which one of those that I mentioned is probably just a few miles from your house? Because I didn't. I don't stand up here and dare judge without first telling you about the plank in my own eye. I've lived in Charlotte and was busy raising my family for 17 years and I never knew where the abortion clinic was. I'd heard of Planned Parenthood and I figured we probably had one of those because we were a really big city. But I didn't know there were four abortion clinics here. I didn't know that abortions in North Carolina were legal up to 20 weeks. You want to frame a reference? This is 24. I didn't know what procedures were used. 
I didn't know that some took two days and there was a chance that a mama could deliver her baby before she made it back to the facility. I didn't know how the morning after pill worked. I didn't know who Margaret Sanger was. I didn't know the difference between Roe versus Wade and Doe versus Bolton. I didn't know that untrained high school dropouts could work inside these places and that anybody could purchase and wear a pair of scrubs. I didn't know they made commissions on the number of appointments for death made and the number kept. I didn't know what the aftermath was like for women and grandparents and future siblings after a baby has been aborted. I didn't know how hard-hearted some women could be toward their own children. I didn't know that that's what these victims' bodies looked like in these mangled up pictures that you've had to see here today. I didn't know how much an abortion cost. I didn't know how many hundreds of thousands of dollars are made here in this city, hand over fist, week after week. I didn't know that so many well-intentioned laws had no teeth and it didn't make a real difference. And I didn't know how loopholes were used and tax dollars consumed and taxpayers left ignorant of it all. I didn't know that the best our state can do to inspect an abortion clinic is once every seven years. Uh -uh. I didn't know that they pick up the baby's bodies that aren't being sold in cardboard boxes and burn them up in a facility that's right over my county line. I didn't know that people ministered the gospel out in front of these dark, disgusting places. And I didn't know that God used prayers that were prayed right there on those sidewalks to change a mama's heart and mind. I didn't know. And I'm grieved at my excuses for not knowing. If children are being ripped apart limb from limb and their parts are being sold off because somebody wants a Lamborghini, then there really is no excuse for not knowing anymore, is there? No. When do we say enough is enough? And I was probably just like you. What I did know was that abortion was wrong. I voted pro-life, I gave to the pregnancy center, and then I swept abortion back under the rug as fast as I could. I shook my head at some of those news stories, and I never gave abortion another thought. Don't talk about it. It's too controversial. Don't take a stand and do something. That's too radical. Don't hold a sign. I mean, what is this, Westboro Baptist? Just ignore what's happening six days a week in your own city and get on with the busyness of your own life. Ladies and gentlemen, we must be aware of whose slippery voice we've been listening to. Now is not the time to give up, but instead we should stand up. You want to talk about choice, you have a choice. Do you, are you going to be silent or are you going to stand and speak the whole truth? Amen. We are not here today to say we are just angered and disgusted by what was seen in those videos, but we are angered and disgusted by abortion itself. Yeah. When do we say enough is enough? Say it with me right now. Enough, enough is enough. enough. Complacency is not the answer. Our country's going to hell as fast as it can make it there. Right. But is the church going to remain asleep? Well, not if you're willing to be sent out as an alarm clock. Are you going to remain silent? Not so long as you have a voice and an email and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Amen. We have tried complacency. We've been doing that long enough. Make sure that the babies that we've seen in those videos have not died completely in vain. Let them stir up a David that's been hanging out with the sheep on the outskirts of this battle. We are now ready to slay this abortion giant. What kind of society stands by and lets the smallest and the weakest be slaughtered without a word of protest? not my society and no more on my watch pragmatism is not the answer what we're going to wait around and find out what somebody else wants to do first pragmatism is complacency's best friend being in the middle of the road on this issue is going to get you run over 
Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed of standing tall and speaking out when right is on your side. I am not interested in taking this giant down in little pieces over the course of another 40 years. He needs to fall hard and fast and his head's coming off too if you want to stick with the biblical analogy. Let me tell you what's keeping me going on this front. They may call me an extremist, that's okay. God's already called me victorious. Amen. Politics is not the answer. Now that doesn't mean that there aren't well-meaning conservative politicians working hard on behalf of the unborn. Know who your representatives are and look it up if you have to. Do the hard part and get involved. But how many times have we seen locally in the state level and national level, a few judges overturn the will and the vote of we the people. Listen to me, don't be inactive, but City Council and Raleigh and Washington, D.C. is not our source for success in this battle. You are the answer. You and me. And we have the power to engage in this battle and win it. And I want us to believe it. There are ways for you to get involved. Christians are on the front lines, not protesting like we're doing today, but proclaiming the truth and offering real help. They need reinforcements. Ask me how to get involved with that because I would love to tell you how ministering with Cities for Life over these past few years has changed me and it's changed my whole family. There are wonderful ministries like Tara Quinn's Monroe Help Crisis Pregnancy Center. They're engaging families over the long haul. That is the Good Samaritan model, the love your neighbor model that Jesus told us, commanded us to follow. There are businesses. Everybody has a gift and a talent. You can be a blessing to mothers and families in need. Some of you can give financially. Some of you can give your time. You can give your voice. But all of us have to give something. The Bible is a book of actions, not just words. So you've said enough is enough. Now let's get up and go fight this battle with the gospel to win it. Planned Parenthood sells baby parts. Planned Parenthood kills little babies to get those parts. But the abortion giant is coming down in the name of Jesus. Abortion will come to an end in our city when the people say enough is enough.